broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Shaylin Herrick. I'm the Director of Marketing here at SOS. I am joined by Derek Wood, our Partner Product Manager. Hello, everybody. So if I could just get a quick audio-visual check so I can know that everyone can see our screen, which is our first page of our presentation, and can hear me okay, just type in the questions area and let me know if you can hear me. We'll wait a couple minutes for those answers to come in, and then we'll get started. All right, it looks like everyone can hear us and see us, so very good. We will get started. This presentation is going to take us through what SOS is. Oops, sorry about that. What SOS is, if you have any questions about that. Um, hopefully, they will all be answered. We will go over the industry overview, so what's going on in the world of online backup, and why do businesses, why do consumers, why do MSPs like you care? And we'll review the SOS 360-degree partner program, which will take you through the benefits of working with SOS, what product features you'll receive, and what you'll receive in order to help build your online backup business. Um, our flagship product, now it's our flagship product, SOS ServerSave, um, has several features and benefits that will help you sell to SMBs. We'll look at those, and Derek will do a demo for us towards the end of the presentation. We'll look at what's new with SOS ServerSave and SOS Online Backup, and how SOS ServerSave is changing the competitive landscape for SM MSPs. And what is the new market position of SOS ServerSave? We'll also take a look at pricing. And then finally, the product tour will take us through the website integration package, SOS ServerSave, and all of our access, share, and restore components, including centralized management. What's going on in the online backup industry? A lot of stuff, as you guys probably know. That's probably why you're all here today, because there is a ton going on. SOS Online Backup has been around really since 2001 and moved to the United States in 2006. We have over 500,000 active customers, and this really should be updated, because we have close to 1,000 active value-added reseller partners, such as yourself. We are constantly improving our product. Our engineering team is, is at work making things easier for you to use better, faster, allowing you to be more productive. We have a lot of data on why and who is uh, starting to adopt online backup. It's really small businesses. If you look at the bottom right-hand portion of the screen here, we have this great statistic from IDC that shows their research confirms 16% of companies are using online backup today. That's not very many. They expect that 69% are evaluating it and or planning to use it. Per survey results, that is two-thirds, a little over two-thirds of businesses out there in the world expecting to adopt online backup because they recognize that they need to keep their data, they need to keep it safe, they need to keep it off-site, and need to keep it accessible for varying reasons. It may just be simple, um, simple core competency changes. It may be legal requirements. It may be government requirements. They could all be different. What other things are propelling the adoption of online backup? Number one is the expansion of internet bandwidth. Um, a great example of this is Australia. Uh, Australia used to have, and some parts still do, um, have very slow internet connections and it is very expensive to upload data there. The government has launched an initiative called the NBN, which is the National Broadband Network, 
This allows Australians to upload data much more quickly than they ever have been before. And this was not so much a phenomenon in North America, but Australia is really a, a, a microcosm of where it was a great example. Fortunately, here in North America, we've had pretty fast internet at pretty decent prices for a long time, allowing a lot of people, particularly here, to put data up in the cloud and get it back whenever we need it. Hosted storage costs have also decreased. So with all that stuff we put up in the cloud, it's now cheaper to keep it there. And the technical sophistication of the population has increased. People know what the cloud is. They know that iTunes kind of hangs out in the cloud, but it isn't really the same thing. They know that Facebook kind of hangs out in the cloud. But what about their own personal cloud? How can they get that? How can they make sure that all of their data is in the same place all the time and they can always get it back? Well, they can, and all of us here can help them. There is a significant increase in size and value of digital data. So all these people, businesses, consumers, you, me, everybody, are putting so much data up into the cloud because it's easy <laughs> and because we have so much of it because we're constantly creating it. So we used to back things up with tape, right? Maybe some of you still do. Maybe you still have clients that are stuck on tape because they feel like it's reliable. Um, but we have really good news. Online backup is cheaper in most cases than tape, and it is more reliable, and it comes with award-winning software to help perform those backups. So what's the next wave of online backup adoption? Um, do you guys mostly have customers that are uh, consumers? Are they residential, or are they businesses? Who are they? Because we have reason to believe that the next wave of online backup adoption is going to be small to medium-sized businesses. So these are businesses with like less than 500 employees or so. And what do they want? Fortunately, we have something that you can give them that they absolutely want. They want total data protection. They want to be able to back up workstations, servers, laptops, and mobile devices, all with one program. And I'm going to guess, since most of our partners do, that you guys also want to be able to do that. You want to be able to work with one program and back up and manage everything with one program from one centralized portal. The question about what you about some of the things that we'll talk about what you get in the program. Uh, are, is this presentation available to partners branded? We do make a presentation available for you, but we don't brand it, but it comes in the open PowerPoint format. And that's how a lot of our collateral comes is generic or SOS branded. Yeah, we're about to talk about some of the things that come to you available to be rebranded, and this type of information is absolutely available to you in a tool that we call the Partner Resource Center, but we will get there here in just a second. So how we designed this, this whole partner program was designed with the idea that a lot of businesses are moving from a, a break-fix relationship with their customers, meaning you only bill for hours worked. So it's you know, whenever they call you, something's broken, you have to go in and fix it, and then you give them a bill for however many hours it took you to do that. The move in the market is becoming much more in line with what your customers need, which is just to have consistent running systems. Just they need to be productive whenever they're paying their employees to do work. It's the whole point of the operation is to be productive. So going into a managed service operation requires a lot more than just adding a couple services in line. You know, just getting online backup is easy. That's, that's pretty simple. Anyone can do that. But if you offer what the Get to West Partner Program allows you to offer, which is a solution that hits mobile devices, laptops, workstations, and servers, and gives you the ability to set up management cycles, you know, manage services so that you have a recurring revenue through each customer, that allows you to be more proactive. It puts your goals in line with your customers' goals and makes you more of an asset to the business than a cost center. As this market became larger over the last few years, we saw that a lot of our partners were getting into some API integration work with our partner APIs that are available and are available for you all now. So what we did to help people get to market faster was we built out a web integration package, which is a web product that we allow just to help you get to market. So instead of having to spend somewhere around five or $6,000 on some web development, and it'll take a couple months to get that done, uh, depending on the skill of your team and the focus of your resources, 
we give you this package that's available within about 48 hours. You plug in your merchant system, so PayPal, Authorize.net, eWay. You plug in your credentials, and you're immediately available to start taking money online for online backup services, these services that you define. Of course, the software is a, a part of that, and that's what we're providing to you. But then the managed service offering behind that is your prerogative. So we look at the partner program. We're some of the more popular online backup companies. Our partner program really has a focus on not just providing you a good service and end-to-end -end solution, but also the tools to really serve your customers. Mass email functionality, a web presence that's already built out so you don't have to have your web designers spend a lot of time doing something. Uh, the web package uh, over time has become more and more about customer-facing interaction. A, again, a sign-up page, subscription email campaign, uh, that way you can keep stay in contact with your customers as your services grow and change. Also, we're giving you all this at a much lower price than most of the competitors. Uh, the availability of our infrastructure is global and the biggest footprint. And also, just the, the price per gig is really what we are looking at. And it's really the cheapest as far as what you're getting and just by the numbers. We have a great question. Um, this webinar that we are watching is available for download to show a coworker. Yeah, absolutely. And there are many others online that are available as well. Um, we also have webinars that were done for uh, European and, and African MSPs and um, Australian MSPs. And part of the partner program is a series of live webinars that we host weekly. So we provide you with training for you and your staff. So level one tech support, you know, known issues, best practices in implementing the software. And we keep them live so that you can come back repeatedly with more questions if you want to talk to somebody. Also, of course, our partner support staff is online and available out of our Los Angeles office, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 p.m. Pacific, and also Saturday and Sunday, 10 to 4 p.m. Pacific. I also want to point out a really exciting development in addition to our program, which is our business development manager. Uh, his name is Mike Zerutney, and he's available to you after you sign up. He is there to help you really pitch online backup and get into any kind of business that you, you may have on your prospect list and help sell them. Um, he is a, a sales guy by trade, so he is there for you to utilize in pitching, in developing your business plan, in talking about marketing materials, um, and how to use them to sell more online backup. He's there to make sure that after you join on, uh, you're successful, and thereby we're successful. That's right. And then looking at the services that we offer here on the screen, this is what, this is what SOS is working on. So starting at the, at the top, about 12 o'clock, we have back up your cloud life. So this is an experimental product suite that we have coming out that just has Facebook backup, soon to be Twitter, Gmail, or, or areas we call it a Google backup for Google Docs, things of that nature. So we're experimenting with this cloud backup concept because a lot of people understand that if it's not on their computer, then it's backed up. Uh, not, not the case. Every time there's a major global event, the Twitterverse shuts down, people lose followers, you can have an entire account lost, and even without major infrastructure issues or you have accounts that are just violated on a regular basis. So through various, you know, malware, you know, whatever the case may be, uh, people are actually hacking into accounts, exposing passwords and all sorts of information. You now have the ability to back this information up. And social media is a huge part of every business today. You know, most of you would probably raise your hand if we asked. How many of you have a business-related Facebook account or a Twitter account or LinkedIn? Uh, this type of information is important, and it becomes more and more a part of our, our daily lives. And just because it's in the cloud doesn't mean it's backed up. Uh, cloud infrastructure is really designed to be cheap and fast, not designed to be secure. Security is expensive, and that's what we specialize in. And that's why we've been so successful as the small business group really comes into the market of online backup. And also one of the reasons why we've won PC Magazine's Editor's Choice Award four times is because our software is very simple to use and very secure. Um, we, we boast that we have military-grade security, which is that we encrypt data three times before it, it finally rests in the cloud, um, which is not something that everybody does. 
So all of your SMD customers, particularly um, perhaps finance or medical customers, should feel very secure with that. Um, over on the right-hand side of the diagram, we illustrate which types of server backup we do. How many of you have customers that need to back up servers, that need to do full bare metal images of servers? Uh, we'd love to know, to know how much we should talk about this, but our SOS EarthSafe product, which is available to partners, does allow you to back up entire SQL servers, Exchange servers, SharePoint servers, Windows servers, um, as well as file servers. If you do want to do a bare metal image of those, you can. Um, additionally, if you have customers that need to get data up into the cloud very quickly, um, maybe they just sign on and they, they want to get data up into the cloud faster than um, would normally be allowable, we do offer a service called Physical Media Upload. And you would pay us for that and then um, mark it up accordingly and, and make your margin on it. And also, it's a unique service where we allow this for our partners to do. So you yourself said you could be set up to do your own customers' physical media upload not something that's specific or locked down to just SOS. And, uh, for more information about that, just talk to your partner specialist. You can give us a call. We'll talk you through it. And also on our knowledge base, you can check it out and just search for physical media upload. Herb has a good question. Um, can you restore an, S an NSQL file, or do you have to restore the whole database? You have to restore the whole database. So it's a, it's a volume-based. Uh, backup program. We'll go through a demo so you'll see that more specifically. Yeah. So the basic features and benefits of SOS Server Save are, number one, if I can sum up this entire slide, that you can back up an entire business with it. Um, but in pieces, you can perform exchange backup and granular recovery. So legal clients in particular will love this feature. You can recover mail message and contacts, basically anything that's in it, an Outlook inbox. Uh, bare Metal Image Creator backs up Exchange, Windows servers, SQL servers, SharePoint servers, and file servers. So what it does is the job of creating the Bare Metal Image. Online Backup and Recovery Manager takes that image up into the cloud, and it does it very quickly. Um, this also sends your file and folder data up into the cloud. The Premier Website Integration Package integrates billing management. This is included in the program, by the way. This allows you to have an e-commerce presence and allows you to sell online backup without really any personal assistance from you. You will be able to have a web presence and sell online backup um, completely passively. And Derek will show you more about that. Mobile, we do have an iPhone backup application that is generic. And we will very soon have an Android backup application that is generic. Uh, we have a question from Daryl. You may cover this in the next slide, but what types of encryption do you use, or is it configurable? So with the cloud backup, we do perform a 256-bit AES before we transfer. We transfer the data over a 128-bit AES, and then we store the data in additional 1024-bit AES that's the data center. And then we have replication across multiple data centers as well. For the image-based backup, it's configurable. Uh, and we'll go through how to set that up, but we do recommend typically backing up images to some sort of local backup machine or staging machine. And the purpose of this is really just a best practice. Uh, we don't require that you buy this from us. We don't do hardware, uh, even though a lot of companies will. You know, so if you go to uh, Zenith or uh, Devo, they'll actually require that you buy a piece of hardware from them, which can be quite expensive. And that's just to even talk about what kind of backup you want to do. So we give you the option to configure it in your own. If we look at the slide we have here, it's just a grid of features against two of the more well-known online backup companies. And really, Mosey and Carbonite have been leaders because the adoption of online backup has been primarily consumer-driven, which is amazing to think that between 2009 and 2011, there was a 33% growth year over year just in the consumer market. And as Shailen was talking about and showed the IDC report that have small businesses really being the, the majority of the adopters at this point and the cause of all this growth, there are no figures for what kind of growth we're going to expect in managed services. So just the, just the hard cost of the software service, sure, we're looking at a huge increase, a little 1 to 3% expenditure increase overall, which sounds small, but it's billions of dollars. So this slide really puts in perspective how different SOS Server Save is from Carbonite and Mosey. So if you have customers coming to you saying, you know, they want Carbonite and Mosey prices, 
well, they're getting a very different product. So certainly keep that in mind. Uh, SOS Service Save rivals a different breed of competitor. So that last slide put SOS Service Save in perspective against Carbonite and Mosey. This puts it in perspective against some, some bigger guys like Zenith and Tronus and Evolve. They all have managed service provider programs, but they have a different product. Where SOS Service Save really shines is in mobile access. We allow you to access data anywhere um, with any, any type of device that has a web browser. And also, we allow up to 500 seats per account. So you don't need to buy per license for file and folder backup. But we do have per license pricing for server backup. We'll get to that pricing here in a little bit. We have some questions. D-Ray asks, do we have Windows Phone backup? No, we don't right now, D-Ray. Um, it's on the roadmap, but not right now. Eric says, how would I get an image back to the crash server using Image Creator? Well, you wouldn't use Image Creator, but Derek is going to show you about how that goes in the demo here in a little bit. Daryl says, are your data centers in the states or in other countries? Our primary data centers are in the United States. We have several, Dallas, Houston, Los Angeles. Uh, we also have another North American data center in Toronto. But if you do need backup in other countries, we have data centers in the United Kingdom, Australia, and soon to be South Africa, as well as India and Ukraine. But our primary data centers are in the United States. Uh, this slide is just a, a little pat on our back for releasing SOS Service Aid version 5.2. Um, it increases flexibility and speed greatly, so you can now upload a, at roughly 40% faster than you used to, and this is because we're doing the encryption on the fly, which makes it a lot faster. Yeah, and this, that's also important to note that we've made these changes after the speed test was run on our website. So if you go to SOSOnOurBackup.com and you see the you know, super fast backup stat, that test was actually done before the release of our version 5 software, which was a complete rewrite of not only the upload agent, but a lot of our server-side software as well. So it was just one of those nice times you get to completely revamp the code base of your, of your software program, and all for the better. Thanks, Derek. Um, as I said earlier, we've won the PC Magazine Editor's Choice Award four times, and this is our most recent article. This was published in uh, November 2nd, 2011. We're very proud of that. The competitive landscape really echoes what we talked about earlier. Um, if you had looked into SOS Online Backup like nine or ten months ago, you would have seen that we really lived in this file and folder online backup space, which is pretty crowded. But things have changed. Since we unveiled SOS Server Safe, that now means that we can compete in this much bigger space, which includes enterprise backup um, for servers as well as laptops and workstations. There are very few uh, other competitors out there that cover this much area in the marketplace. So what about pricing? I'm sure everybody wants to know about this. Um, I definitely encourage you guys to ask questions about this if anything is unclear. Um, the product starts with five server save licenses, and those can be used for any type of server. So if you have five SQL servers that you want to back up with these, that's cool. You can do that. If you have two Exchange and three SQL servers, that's fine. You can do that too. You can mix and match however you like. Same thing with the cloud space. The Service Save 5 comes with one terabyte of cloud space. You can mix and match that however you want. You don't even have to use it on the servers if you don't want to. For those of you who have customers without servers, we do have additional programs that don't require the purchase of server licenses. Um, but we find that about 92% of our customers do need server licenses, so we, we do focus on that here in this presentation. Um, the monthly price is kind of like a slightly more expensive cell phone bill. It starts at $399 per month. Prices do go down as you buy more. Prices also go down if you purchase annually. Um, so if you think that this is going to be something that you want to include in your business for more than a year, um, certainly look into purchasing annually. Um, another great feature that you can do uh, pre-sale with your partner specialist is do an ROI analysis. 
They'll take into account exactly who you have as a customer right now, who you're looking to acquire, and how that can affect your margin. So how much money will you make by joining this program? Um, and what kind of things do you need to do in order to launch your business? SOS Online Backups Partner Program really is a business in a box. So we're here to get you up and running if you haven't been selling online backup before. How many of you have not been selling online backup? Are you looking to just start selling online backup? Or um, are you looking to switch online backup providers? Jerry says he's just starting. Cool. Congratulations. We're excited for you. Daryl says he's just starting. All right, cool. Well, we're really glad that you're here because um, we are a, a great business in a box solution to get everyone started selling online backup. Um, Derek is going to queue up the demo here. So he is going to show you the website integration package, which will help you sell online if you don't have a web presence, which maybe some of you don't. He is also going to show you online backup and recovery manager, bare metal image trader, exchange granular recovery and the partner dashboard. So let me start by just pulling up the, the SOS website and we'll go to the partner dashboard. Again, if you go to our, our site, SOSOnlineBackup.com, and then you go to our support site, the new support system we just launched uh, with Zendesk a couple weeks ago is really built out to tell you what you're getting and to explain how it's all used. So if you want some more detailed information, you go take a look there. Um, but then just to log in real quickly here. So. All right, so here we have our new dashboard. And we're rebuilding this whole system as we just rebuilt the whole backup agent. So we had to redo the monitoring and management controls. And it's really turning out to be pretty nice. So we're, we're looking at... Uh, regular changes. Uh, we we'll probably rewrite re re release notes on a weekly basis at this point. So we have our central management portal, which we go in here. First, it's going to show us accounts and show us what's been completed, what's not. We have you know, red light, green light system. So it says, okay, this backup was completed successfully. We get some more details. Does look like anything was changed in that backup step? So if we can get something else. So it shows you how many files are processed as far as what's selected in your backup, how many files were unchanged, how many files were changed, and then the result of the backup and how much time it ran in. Also, we give you an update if a backup didn't run. So if it said, like here it says failed, no, or no backups run in the last three days. And the stats was, was stopped in the middle of this backup. So the, the system has a couple of different statuses and different scenarios where you see a message. So it, while the backup is on schedule, has it run recently or not? You know, yes, it, these all have green, they reported, you can see the details on them. And then you have these ones that say they haven't backed up in the last three days, or maybe the backup hasn't run in the last five days or the last week. And it'll tell you that so you know what you should go pay attention to. Uh, we're going to be building in August management controls so you can actually launch a backup, you can control backup settings and backup set schedules. Uh, from this dashboard. Right now, you're, you're just getting a monitoring system, so a kind of system to tell you what should I be paying attention to. Another question here, uh, how often do you see backups that fail? When the backups fail? So right now, that we use this for for trials, so we have a lot of failed, you know, haven't run backups in the last week because these accounts have expired and they're just not running backups any longer. Uh, but we leave these in here so you can see the different status types. So I'm uh, not quite sure if I'm getting the point of the question. So that's the monitoring system. So we're going to be adding uh, a lot to that. And then we have the online backup and recovery section, which just lets you add new accounts and actually launches you into your web integration package. So if I pull this up, well, what you're going to be getting is a full site like this on on a subdomain of our domain. So, oh, I see. Just trying to get a feel for how much you need to be involved once it's set up and sold to the customer. Well, 
build, you know, it's, a, it's built to be simple in a set and forget system. Backup is a front heavy service though. So the first time that you install the software, you know, you're going to find out if there's some network configuration things you need to change. We've developed it so that it's as, I guess, compliant with your, your typical setup as possible. So it just uses ports 443 and port 80. Um, that's how it gets out. So 443 is for the SSL, 480 is just general getting out. So you don't generally need to configure that. But when you have environments with more security or less security, that's when you'll, have, you'll see you know, what you may need to change, if anything at all. But it's front heavy service. It may take some time to get that first backup completed. And that's really when you need to spend time looking at it. Otherwise, we just give you the monitoring tools so you can see you know, what you need to be paying attention to. So the web integration package, you have partnername.onlinebackupcheckout.com. So you're going to tell your partner specialist what you want to go right here. So you choose, you know, curb, uh, curbs backup on backupcheckout.com. We recommend using something that's similar to your current site if you do have one. So just take your domain and plug it in here. That way there's a connection for your customer. So this comes by default with 10 built-out pages, and this content that you're looking at now is exactly how it'll be given to you. And then you'll be given the tools to be able to come in and modify this content and also the uh, recently added CSS style sheet editor, uh, which is really nice. So then you can, if you have some web design resources or experience, you have a little more flexibility to kind of change that up. So by default, we have some information for you know what you might want to market to home users, business users, why you, and of course you're going to want to go ahead and change this up. Uh, the security, service coverage, you know, and this of course is going to be something that, again, you'll you'll modify to make consistent with your business and your, your business name. Also, you don't have to use this whole site if you don't want to. If you already have a website, you have a web designer, and you have any like what's going on there, then you can just link to the sign-up page and to the login page. Here we see the sign-up page allows us to come and we can create a trial account or we can pay for an account. Uh, there's a really nice coupon code system built in, so if I use a coupon, uh, it'll tell me, you know, I know this coupon is invalid or it'll tell me what the discount is that I get with it. So again, we have PayPal integration, so PayPal Pro. It does work with PayPal Standard, although PayPal Standard has uh, quite a good number of limitations when it comes to recurring billing payments. So we don't recommend PayPal standard unless you absolutely have no other option. Also authorized.net is available. And you don't have to make people come and sign up for the web page. You can create accounts administratively as well. So let's log into this so you can see what it looks like in the back in the back end. So, a couple questions coming through too. Great questions. Uh, are your data centers in the states or in other countries? I think we got to that. Uh, we, we have it all over the world. Are they replica data replicated to multiple data centers? Yes. Unless you have country-specific requirements other than the U.S. So if you need your data to reside only in Canada, then you don't have the dual offsite backup, as, as we call it, so the replication to another data center. Although all of our data centers are tier three and four rated, so they all practice backups themselves. Uh, they're all RAID configured, various levels of RAID, uh, backup generators, multiple lines as far as internet service providers, so you know, some up to 20, 22 different lines. So they they are state of the art, you know, top notch data centers, no matter where they are. Uh, question: How is the customer alerted when the backup fails? Well, the backup software has a final step in the upload agent that says create email report. So it'll generate an email report if the backup ran with errors or if it uh, ran with um, overran fines to confirm it. It'll give you all the information you need. So it'll give you a list of all the files that had errors uh, and just tell you what, what went on in the backup, how, how long it ran. So basically the summary that we saw in the monitoring system, but with more detail. Uh, Dale's question, are firewalls a concern? Absolutely. So it's, you know, whenever you go into a, a 
network and you have a firewall set up, such a hardware firewall, you want to go make sure that that's not going to block you. So it's really easy. Whenever I go to a new new deployment, <clears throat> just run a backup. See what happens. If it runs, then you're good. If it doesn't, then you need something to configure. It's, it's that easy. So uh, our firewalls a concern, just as it is for any other software that's trying to get out of the network. How is the customer alerted when a backup fails? Uh, we were just talking about that. There are email reports uh, upon successful backup. So if a backup doesn't run, there's no report. And so they would see the lack of an email being a sign of something they need to check in on. Does the SOS integrate with any of the RMM software, such as Continuum uh, or ConnectWise? No, SOS does not yet integrate with any PSAs or RMMs. Uh, we are, we do have it on the roadmap, though. So we're we're looking to be able to start getting into that probably in September uh, with an undefined ETA as far as when the first system is that we'd be integrated with. Uh, but currently not with any of them. Eric asked, are the data centers owned by SOS or leased space? It's leased space. So we own the hardware. We do the NOC services. Uh, but we do not have our own data centers. All right. So fin finish going through the web package. We have a lot of different options. So it's really started off with just the purchasing system, so just being able to come in and plug your gateway credentials. And over time, we started adding more and more to this web package to come with what it is today. And it's really uh, quite a robust system. So we go to admin settings. You have the ability to set your administrative email, uh, your signature of the system, copyright, and the footer of the web page. Also, some website metadata, so your page title, description, keywords for some of that SEL, SEM work. Uh, then it gives you also the ability to upload you know, client software, uh, which is, you have this link here, so this is actually, I can copy and paste this into a browser and download the software. And that's also what's going to be sent out to your customers when they create an account. Once you're going to get a confirmation email that says, hey, here's your software, here's your username, click here if you need help, talk to you later. So going through the setup, you see it's quite robust. You have mailer settings. So for the mass email tool, uh, it's not sent from our system. So you, you plug in your email information, the SMTP settings, uh, bounce back handling to make sure you, know you're, you are can spam compliant. And we have the rules here just in case you're not familiar with them. Uh, the mailer is a really great tool. It also gives you some nice statistics as far as bounce rate, open rate, click through, email sent. Uh, users who unsubscribe from your emails. So it's a nice little system here that we can built in. We also built in a standard support system, so just a basic way for you to allow your customers to contact you in case you need more help. And if you have an active uh, ticketing system where you have a, an email that always creates a ticket if you send something to it, something like support at you know hodge.com, whatever it is, and that creates a ticket in your system. You can change the admin email and the admin settings to be that email address. That way when people do submit tickets, you get alerted in that system as well. A content section, again, allows you uh, a nice way to change the content. So we have a little visual editor. You go to edit. Again, it's more SEO, SEM, page-specific settings that you can do. If we hit edit, then it brings us into our visual editor. So here's what it looks like in the editor. And if we launch the site again, We'll see this is what it looks like live. So pretty, pretty self-explanatory. And then the tools you have, you can put it into an HTML view, or you can leave it as a visual editor. And other than that, it's pretty much Microsoft Office familiar tools. We've recently added the CSS editor. So this is for uh, some web designers, uh, people or web developers, uh, people with a little more web experience, essentially. And it allows you a little more flexibility to change the look and feel of this web package. So one of the things is, you know, we don't we don't provide cPanel access to this site as it's a it's a web application. It's not a, a web design service we're offering. And so the CSS editor was a big request we had from our partners over the last uh, four and a half five months. And we've we've rewritten our design to be completely in CSS and then give you access to that. So that's a, a big step that we put in here. 
a coupon system. So you have a coupon code system where you can enter in any type of code description. You can have a start date or end date for the coupon code. You can make the discount a percentage or a fixed dollar amount or limited by number of uses. So you can have, you know, the first 20 users get a 50% discount and then everyone else has to use, you know, some other code. Uh, so you can really be creative with that and use the, the mass email tool to alert your customers as to that, that discount. As far as what you're charging, we have all the plans that you need listed here and then it's a simple edit system where you can edit the price a title, so if you want to call this some sort of special plan, you know, one gigabyte, you know, business backup, whatever it is, and then you can define what those different titles mean, both on the sign-up page and in your terms page. So the terms page, again, something that's very important to have done because customers have to agree to it. And we put some, we just put our EULA in here, so it, it's not really a boilerplate, it's just something that, that's not a completely empty page, but the EULA is not reflective of the terms and conditions for what they, your customers have with you. It's just for using the software. So we, we, it is required that you come in here and, and do this. Uh, your merchant system will not like it if you don't. Uh, if you get audited, you could be fined or have your merchant system canceled. Uh, you can change whether the plan is active or not, and everything else is fine. So you can say, okay, interval, title, active or inactive, and the price. Inactive or active means it will show up or it won't show up on your sign-up page. And that is the web integration package. And again, really simple. No longer do you have to pay you know, thousands of dollars to have you know, our services integrated into a merchant service. You can come and just plug in your PayPal Pro credentials and be good to go. All right, so that's the dashboard. And we have news and updates, so whenever we issue an update, you can submit, you can subscribe at an RSS feed or just the email updates as well if you're not checking it regularly. And then the ability to download you know, the server backup or the Mac client or the PC client is available here too. Good question. Uh, let me, I'm going to pull up our VM here. So I'm, I'm just running a Windows 2008 R2 box. Let me just share the uh, demo. Has everyone seen the demo screen? You should be seeing the server save application launched here. Now some Jerry, you seeing it now? All right, good. All right, um, Michael asks, with my recurring billing web hosting business, I use use the ePay. Can I integrate that service with SLS? Sure, we don't we don't have that built into our web package, but we do have APIs that are available. So the API is for create account, upgrade account, cancel account, um, basically everything that you would use. So instead of using our web package, you would just take our APIs and integrate it into your own site. And that's uh, no difference in the program. There's no there's no cost difference. Do you use the APIs or you use the web package? Your choice. And another question by Dale, does the backup occur continuously or at a set time? Does it degrade performance while backing up? Can a set backup time be created? Yes, you have scheduling controls of your backup, and it, it runs at a scheduled time, not continuously. All right, so here we're looking at the backup applications. So. As we saw earlier, the logo has changed since I last logged in. So I changed the account I logged in with, and that's how the branding occurs. The branding occurs dynamically. So once you log into the software, you'll see the logo and the product name up here change. And you 
you have the ability in the partner dashboard to change the product name and the logo at, at your leisure. So the first application is the online backup and recovery tool. That's our bread and butter. That's what we've been doing for so long. Uh, we actually have workstation backup listed on this as well, just as an emphasis that you should be backing up workstations. Um, users are the biggest point of exposure to loss and are the biggest hole in any system. So users are the biggest security risk, no matter what you're talking about. You see here that it does say update available. So when we publish updates, it'll let you know. So if I go to launch this, it's going to first request that I download and install the latest version of the software. So service savings is this wrapper application that includes access to multiple programs. So it's going to launch uh, the online backup and recovery manager. It's going to launch image creator and all that software. And this is going. Any questions about upgrades or policies for pushing this out? Uh, we do we do have an MSI available. Good question. So the question was, do you have an MSI available for the software? And yes, we do. So you ask your partner specialist or you can submit a ticket to support and they can get that to you. Jerry, is a good question. What OSs are supported? So, basically anything after, you know, 2003, so, you know, XP, most desktop, most Windows desktop um, versions are going to be supported that are in use. So, XP, Vista, Windows 7, uh, Windows 8, we have an officially launched support for Windows 8, but we have used it on Windows 8 and it didn't give me any problems. So let me go here and shut up protect. Uh, we do have a Mac OS X 10.6 and above client that we just released. It's uh, version two. It's really a first version out of beta. So go take a look. A uh, great piece of software gets the job done. Uh, it's really what we're looking at for a first release and that it's a scheduled backup for your, for your Mac users. So it is terrific. Uh, there is no Linux support currently for any of the software. And Shadow Protect is only for Windows. So here in Shadow Protect, let's just go through and create a quick backup job. You know, so the idea here in this demo is we're going to go through creating an image-based backup, uh, how we can schedule that, and the retention policy on the incrementals. And then we'll go through the online backup tool and how to get that information, how to get information off-site and how to recover information from the cloud. And then we'll go back to image creator show recovery through an image-based backup, as well as exchange granular recovery to show how you can do a mailbox level restore. So quickly, create a backup. First you come through and you have a volume-based system. So you select the volume that you want the image of. So if exchange is sitting on its volume, then you grab it. And it's going to use VSS to get a transactionally consistent backup of that Exchange database or the SQL database or the SharePoint database, whatever it is that's on there. So you select the whole volume to go. Then you select what we refer to as your, your staging machine. So when you're running backups and you're going to take especially images off-site, image backup is a lot more system heavy than regular file and folder backup. Naturally, they're bigger files and there's going to be a little more time involved when you're backing them up. Also, because of the size of the information we're talking about, we recommend the staging machine because it's good to have a place to restore information and also to have a local backup. Online, again, uh, we're providing an end-to-end -end solution, which means online backup, local backup, both at file and folder level and at an image level. So it's a complete system, and you, you should have you know, a strategy in each of those which is a lot, part of what Mike Zerini will talk about with you and what we do webinars on as well, which is how do you define your managed backup solution? So you select your network location for your staging machine and point it there. For now, I'm just going to point it to this virtual drive F. I hit next, 
and then it has different options for running the backup. Most of you are probably familiar with weekly backup regimes when it comes to tape backup. So you run a full backup every week, and then you run an incremental backup thereafter. So actually, let me cancel this out, and I can see that I have a backup job created already. I'm going to delete this so I can show you all the scheduling options. Is it won't let you schedule multiple backup jobs at the same time. So a weekly backup regime is a full backup on the week and then incremental throughout the week, so every day. Uh, the reason you would do that is to consolidate how many files you have to keep track of and how many files you would, you would use in recovery. So the old system would require that you first recover the full image and then in sequential order each other incremental file. It can take a very long time. So with our system, it's very simple. There's an intelligent file chain recovery, so you select the most recent incremental, hit recover, and it's going to recover as a virtual drive, or you can do a, a boot disk situation to get up as a full machine, and you don't have to go through each incremental. So there's no additional recovery step, whether you have a thousand incremental files or two. So it's nice in that you don't have to do this anymore. So we do what's called a continuous incremental backup, meaning you run a full backup the first time, and then it just runs incremental thereafter. You don't have to manage to that. Very nice, very simple, and also just a lot more effective if you're going to take this off-site. So one of the things about online backup in, in when it comes to image backups is this, it's a new strategy because it's a newly viable strategy. Bandwidth is now available where you can handle this. Machines are fast enough. And you have the technology where you can actually make that something that's worthwhile. Uh, we have a cloud boot software or cloud boot service that we offer. And if you have a you know a, a SQL SQL server you need to recover that, we can actually mount that in our cloud and provide you with an IP address and credentials to that while you're rebuilding everything on site. So we have a couple of different options how you can do that. And just talk to our and talk to our partner specialists about it. Jerry asks, uh, is there no option to, to do a total backup every X number of days to ensure everything is current, rather than 10 years of incrementals? With using Image Manager, you can do that. So Image Manager is a separate, a separate software you can install. And the Image Manager gives you a lot more control over uh, retention policies and things of that nature. Uh, one of the services we recommend to our partners is to do test recoveries. Uh, one of the reasons that tape recovery is, has a, a recorded 60% failure rate, I think, I think the study was done between 2005 and 2009, was because managed services, or the lack thereof, didn't really make it time efficient or productive for IT service providers, us, to do test recovery. A test recovery is a great way to add value to why customers are coming to you and not the other guy. And it's also just a nice load off. You know, you, you do a test recovery, you know you're good, and then you can even keep that on site at your location. That way you have another layer of backup for your customer. Backup and risk management is all about belt and suspenders, right? You know, what can you do to prevent things from happening? If you can't prevent things from happening, how, how best can you react to those, to those situations? You notice here that it also says use VSS. So if you, it basically it can be a transaction consistent backup for any VSS writer enabled database. So it's almost every SQL database. There's some old accounting databases that may not have VSS writer enabled, which means that you're gonna have to script out stopping the database before you run it. So we have options for that. So I can so here I'm at the option where I can select the compression, encryption, and then I have some advanced options. One of those is a question from earlier, setting the level of encryption that you like uh, for the local backup. And then you can do different commands. So before it takes a snapshot of the database, you can you know, script out uh, stopping an older database that doesn't have a VSS writer enabled. That way you don't snap off any of the transactions that are currently in queue. So this way it'll say, or rather, if you can't negotiate with the database, it'll just stop it and then get a full backup. And really, it's, uh, you know, each, each database developer 
or developer community should tell you what's going on with your back with their database and how you should back it up. A different options. So self-healing incremental recovery is really nice. It's enabled by default. So this means that every time an incremental backup runs, it's first going to verify the previously run incremental backup. So if that fails, then it fixes itself because it runs an incremental from the previous incremental backup, not from that other from the point which it is or from the failed incremental backup. So this is a really nice system. Splitting the image is always recommended if you're going off site. You know, we have a lot of local procedures that are nonlinear, so the file size increases, the time to process increases dramatically. So we recommend if you're going to go off site, you want to set a limit here of say 10 gigs per file. Uh, this is just more effective when it comes to your online backup strategy with this program. So we'll disable that, hit next because it's a summary, hit finish. And now that's going to be running. So let me go to the online backup software. So we log into the online backup. And first it's going to say, okay, I want to you know, scan all the folders on this machine or just my local personal folders. And this is great for workstations. Again, simple and secure. So you just scan all folders. You have an edit option down here so you can do different filters as far as file types or file sizes or folders. Uh, or you can just turn this off altogether and just say, don't worry about it, I'm just going to use the Windows Tree View. Uh, no, regardless of what you select, you'll come to the Windows Tree View next. Here it's going to show you what you've selected for backup. So this is the only time at which users actually notify that they're at or over quota. So when the backups are running and you have a folder selected, it was a, a business decision of ours not to stop backups if that folder goes over quota. We give you monitoring tools to see that accounts are becoming overdrawn or not. And those are going to be released uh, this month. So you can go and, you know, a backup can continue running despite being over an account. We just saw a lot of our competitors who put these hard stops on backups running if uh, an account were to grow over its account size. Well, this is detrimental. Um, maybe people didn't notice or they didn't get around to upgrading until a certain time. And we decided to have a soft enforcement of this with notification by you, our partners, rather than they hard caught of cut off of service. So we hit next. Now we're going to set our online backup schedule. So if you're using Image Manager, you'd want that to run at the end of the consolidation step. Uh, if you're not using Image Manager, then you just run it when you know at the end of the day, it's six or seven p.m. You just want to make sure that whenever it's running, it's consistent. For workstations, you can actually run every couple of hours. There was a question earlier about performance and how the backup runs. Uh, the backup runs very nicely on your system. Uh, it, it does it in batches, so it'll go first through local PC resources and processes and then upload, and then local PC resources and then upload. So it, it's pretty nice on your system. For servers, it's a little different. You generally don't want to run more than what's productive on your servers too often, so you would run maybe nightly. On your workstations, though, you can get a much better restore point objective as far as how old are your backups by running every couple of hours. If you are running every couple of hours, make sure whoever's receiving the emails is, one, okay with it because they're going to get an email every hour, and that they have a good filter set up. You know, it's just a, a good option to have. And you can separate, you can include multiple people in here by separating with a comma. So you can send out email addresses to multiple people, you know, the end user and, and the tech. We finish, and now the backup's going to run. A good question from Jerry. Uh, I and one from Ginger. So Jerry says, "I've seen other backup programs puke with Eudora when the program is open." Do you know if this works with Eudora running? You know, I'm not, I'm not really that sure. Uh, I've never used Eudora, uh, but it, I'm not even sure what it is. Does it use VFS? And while you're getting back to me, Ginger asks, if the customer goes uh, over their limit, is there a charge for this since you allow them to continue? 
no, there's no there's no charge to you, but you're certainly needing to get in contact with them to charge them more. So what there is is there's a soft limit. You'll see that the account is overdrawn, and you'll go in and upgrade it, or you'll contact the customer and have them upgrade if they need to pay you more for it. Eudora is a mail program. Okay, so the mail programs, uh, it, it really depends on how the backup works. Again, if it's it, because it's a database, you may need to package it in a certain way. You, it, it really depends. I would, I would assume that the conflict would typically be with BSS, but since Eudora probably doesn't use it, I, I don't know what, what the problem could be. Uh, but yeah, you can just try it out. If you contact the partner specialist, they'll get you a trial and you can see what's going on. And let us know. All right, so that was a backup. Uh, if I go to restore, let's say I need to recover information back, there's this nice uh, calendar view where it gives me a bold date every day I have a backup running. So I can go back a few months. Uh, if I want to go back even more, I can go back years. Uh, we do not purge information from the backup set ever. So it's, it's, all, it's, a, it's here unless you remove it. So unlimited version history for free. What we mean by that is if you have say a PST file that's backing up every day. A PST file could be a couple of gigs. Um, if you have 100 versions of it, you could possibly have you know, 200 gigs of data just in the versions of that PST. Our program only charges you based on the largest version of a file. So versioning is based on complete file path. So if the file path is unchanged, then it's a version. So you can have you know, 500 versions of your PST file, but if the largest file file in that history is two gigs, and two gigs is it. So yes, largest, not the most current. Well, that's because, you know, we don't want, you know, not everyone's that crafty, but I mean, you, if you, if we did the most current, you could back up a really big file, then create a new version of it really small, and then you get away with having access to a really big file. So, I mean, you already have way more data up in the cloud than what you're being charged for, so it's a pretty good deal. Uh, so you do but on your end, yes we do. Uh, Jerry just confirmed, so if it was huge but now tiny, it's going to, using the bigger space, yeah. All right, so these are all the machines that we have backed up on this machine on this database. So if I go back to sometime in the past, on February 9th, and I hit next, then it'll show me my backup set as of February 9th. So we'll see a lot fewer machine names. So here we go. Really simple Windows Tree View Explorer to cover. Uh, see, here's my my F drive where I have all that data, so I can select the whole F drive, or I can just go through and select the backups that I need. So let's say I recover that information, and I got it. I have it here on my machine, and I recovered it to drive to the F drive. Based on these images, I can take one and just right-click it and just hit Quick Mouse, and that's going to launch me into the new drive that's being created. So that gave me a failed backup, and I'll show you how to look at what happened to that backup. But see that I recovered the virtual drive P in just a couple of seconds. So you get on the mailbox level, and very simple. Also, if we go to if we go back to the Shadow Protect software, I can one go to backup history and see why this failed. And if I go here. Uh, I can see right here that there's not enough space on the disk. So pretty simple thing to resolve. If I go to my disk map, or if I go back to Wizards and go to Restore, or Explore Backup, first I select the, the, the incremental I want, I hit Open. 
going to give me information about this backup job. So it's going to tell me, hey, you know, we see a ton of different incrementals for this specific backup job. Which one do you want to get to? And I say, give me the most recent. And then you see it gives us the option to have a drive letter, so it next. And then this is the intelligent file chain recovery that it does. So no, no difference to us as far as how many incrementals we have. We hit finish. And now it's going to create virtual folder of Q. And we cover the information here. Next, we go to Exchange. And we say, OK, let's, target, let's open up a new target PST or EDB file. So I hit Browse. And then I go to my computer and go to the latest drive I just recovered, so Q. And I click through to my EDB file, Exchange Database. I hit Open. Automatically identifies what the transaction logs are. We say OK. It's going to need me to verify my license information. So I should go here. Oh, so let's go back to my dashboard. And we'll verify the license file that being used. Any questions why I sign a license? And you can see how I do that real quickly. The when you select your target exchange database, it's going to authenticate based on the Windows user you're logged in as. Good question. So that's um, how does it grant me access to the to a target exchange server that's based on the user you're currently logged in as. I'm going to go to manage licenses. See here that it's assigned, so I'm going to go back. So I get a license details. I'm going to save my license file. I'm going to save it over this one. Okay, done. I get my preferences. And I gotta go find my license. All right, now let's select our EDB file again. Well, I guess I can put any of these. Exchange, mailbox, mailbox, EDB. And great. Also, that's a good information. Uh, good question. Is there a limitation on how many mailboxes per license? So each license by default comes with access to up to 25 mailboxes. And you can upgrade up to 50 for free. For pricing information after 50 mailboxes, contact your partner specialist and they'll be able to get that to you. So I'm having a license issue with my exchange program, so I'll have to forego that demo today. Uh, but it gives you a really powerful control over your exchange database as far as very simple uh, previewing search functionality through uh, calendar items, attachments, whatever it is. So you have that user who comes and constantly uh, asking you to recover information that they just deleted or lost. You could do that as well as recover an entire exchange store to you know, just similar hardware. So it really does give you a nice, a nice simple system to use. So getting back to our machine, this is the demo environment set up so you can see this information. This is recorded also. Uh, but really calling your partner specialist, 877-896-3611. And you'll be able to contact our partner specialist to walk you through the ROI to make sure that whatever program that you do enter is appropriate for you and really is going to maximize what you can 
turn around with your customers. Is the operation of, of the the whole idea at the end of the day is that we make some money in this program. So again, SLS is giving you everything you need to get out to market and provide your customers with a full end-to-end -end backup solution. So call now and they'll be able to help you get started. Oh, we have some more questions, and I'll keep taking questions for a little bit. So those of you who want to stick around, feel free. Do you guys offer a solution where you provide a server with all your backed up server safe servers mailed to a PR site? Well, we do have we do have a it's the same way that there's a physical media upload where we will take a drive of a server that you want us to back up, say your 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 site isn't very fast as far as the network or maybe the machine or just a lot of data, we can help do that faster for you. In the same way, we can recover data to you. Uh, we don't actually ship, like drop ship drives out of the backup data center because we get some of the security. But what we do is we do recover the information for you and we can ship it out. But, but it's the same way that you can do it. Um, really, it's just a dedicated machine with a lot of a lot of horses on it and really fast internet connection. So if you want, you can do that. You can match the same service by going to a data center and running, and renting out a really fast server for a month and then just using that for whatever amount of time you need to do a backup and do a recovery. We do have a solution for some of our bigger clients where you can actually lease a specific server so that we can just pull drives and ship them to you. So if you have a larger environment or a larger customer, you can contact your partner specialist about that option as well. Any other questions about the service? All right, I think that'll pretty much sum it up for us today then. Thanks everyone for coming. Uh, it was a pleasure. Again, my name is Derek Wood, partner product manager here at SOS. And uh, Shailen has left us, but it's Shailen, director of marketing. Uh, you can contact us directly anytime. Uh, also, be sure to contact your partner specialist so let them know you're here at the webinar. And we're going to be entering you all in a Kindle drawing. So we'll announce the winner of the Kindle next week. And good luck to all of you. Cheers and have a good one.